All right, Rob, we just talked about LeBron. You think since the decision 10 years ago, he's been a failure. I think he's been a success. Um, and again, I failed to mention going back to Cleveland, delivering that city his first championship since Jim Brown, 52 years. So that, that's pretty good, too. Um, but Kenny Smith, I don't know whether he'd agree with you or me on that last decision or debate. But he has a top ten that's a bit strange. How, well, how would he not be with me if he's putting him if that that all the stuff you're talking about, now, Chris? He might be right. I he mean, how, be. if he's got him number ten, he's got LeBron in number ten in his top ten. Uh, he doesn't have Kobe even in the top ten. I, I think right, that's clearly Kenny Smith doesn't have a high regard for today's level of basketball. I mean, how can you when you got the two best perimeter players of the last of this generation and and one of them is at 10 and the other one who knows where he is. That's just I mean, look, Oscar, I was great, obviously averaged a triple double. He got one ring. And remember, a triple double with no threes. I'm just saying, yeah, like, well, the threes, the points isn't the issue. No, you know no I'm mean? just saying. I'm just saying, but the but, the pace. I'm not taking anything away from Oscar's thing, triple double because he really averaged it for the first five years of his career. If you put all those games together, it's like 384. He averaged a triple double off over his right. first five years, but only one full year. You know, so like one year he might average 9.4 assists. The next year, 11.1. You know, and the same thing with rebounds. So, overall, it averaged out to a triple-double. But still, um, he didn't have more. I, he didn't have a more successful career than Kobe or, or LeBron. I just can't, I just can't say he did. Uh, Larry Bird is tremendous. I wouldn't put him ahead of LeBron. He won three rings in 13 years. Uh, but he's 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 great. I mean, you can argue that. I, you know, somebody can argue that. But Shaq ahead of LeBron, I can't go there. I mean, Shaq got his four rings, um, and he did but, win without Kobe. So that was a, well, a we, plus. He won with Wade, yeah. Without you know Kobe, what I'm saying, won, right? He right. won three with Kobe, one with Wade. Um, but went to nah, the went to I the can't. finals with Orlando. I mean, his resume is not bad. I'm just. I saying. think I might be wrong, but I heard. And this is where it, clearly it's a highly personal list. I believe Kenny had Nate Archibald in the top ten. Tiny was great, but come on, he was an MVP, but you, but not a, was he? Not, I don't think I, no, I he thought, wasn't an MVP. No, I thought Tiny. I thought he wanted. Nope, he led the oh, league led the league in, in both in assists? scoring and assists. Okay, yeah. okay. he was he was I, that I knew was he his kind of claim to fame. Yeah, I knew he had some. Great year. I thought that was a year. I thought that he was an MVP. Yeah, okay. he wasn't an MVP. But obviously a Hall of Famer, all-time great. But I, you can't put him, you know, obviously have him in the top ten. Um, but, yeah, what? so what What are your thoughts on it? Kenny, one thing he said is that uh, today's game is much easier to score. He even used an example where he had averaged 17 points a game for the like Sacramento Kings in, like, the late 80s, I believe. He said today that would have been about 25, 26 points a game. And look, I, Kenny Smith never made an all-star team, won two championships, was a very good player. But he does – so some people might say, come on, yeah, right, that he was going to average 25, 26. He has a point in that the three-point shot wasn't prominent back then. He was a very good outside shooter, so he would have been shooting it a lot more now and scoring. Let's keep it real. No and, doubt. And, you know, going to the bucket is a lot easier than ever. It's easier to get there because the floor is so spread. And then once you get there. There's no hand checks, no, Chris. There's no. nothing. All of that would be – you would be getting sent to the line. Yep. I mean, it, it, it is easier to score. I, I, and you know what? I know I heard Colin. I didn't get to see his list. He, he brought up, like, the top ten scoring games or something in NBA history, and they aren't of late. They were before, you know what I mean? So that before was his, his argument. Era, he was- yeah, like that was his argument, but I didn't see the list, so I can't, I don't want to so put it So when he's at there. top 10 scoring games, he meant like points you know, scored by each team or something like no, that? No, 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 like like individual scoring games. If it's so easy to score. Oh. Uh, well, nobody's know. as good as Jordan. Oh, he's right. talking about, okay, so like, 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 like individual. Will. Right, or, right, right. Yeah, you right. know what I mean? Like things like that, right. but that's not what it, it's, it, it's, 
I don't think it's about that. I think it's about the difficulty of of scoring. We saw, I brought it up before, the Michael Jordan going to the paint during that era in the 90s, right, with the Pistons and the Knicks. It's Just, amazing, It was totally Rob. different. Yeah, nowadays – Teams think if you've got one big man posting up, you can't drive, right? Oh, he's clogging up the paint. Right. Please. You used to have two big men in the paint offensively, two big men defensively guarding them, and the whole game was based around the, the paint. So when you drove, you you had to be able to get your shot off around with like six people in the paint around you. I mean, that's no exaggeration. And that was at every level. I played small college ball. And it was the same way. It wasn't like you drove expecting it to just be to part like the Red Sea. You know what I mean? Right. And so I and here's the thing. I agree in the 60s, the pace of play was so fast, even faster than today, as far as shots taken and things like that. And so scoring was a little higher. You saw those astronomical numbers that everybody or that the superstars put up. But Kenny, the 80s and 90s particularly the 90s, the defense and the pace was very slow. And the defense was as, the best we've seen as far as ruggedness and toughness. And um, and I, so much so that they wanted they were worried. They wanted to get more offense into the game, and that's why they took out things like hand-checking and stuff. Right, and, and it used to be – It was to hard be, to score, yeah. I, I can remember covering a Knicks 76ers playoff series – and it was Oakley and Barkley going at it like crazy. You know what the lead of my, the lead of my story was, Chris? I was doing a sidebar uh, in the game. Ch- the lead was Charles Barkley wanted to call nine one one last night because they got <laughs> roughed up by Oakley. That, that was the lead, and he and he said like the quote was like, you know what he did to me. If he did it to me out on the street in New York, he would be arrested. You know, like that was the quote. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, I mean, it was it was physical. And it was just – and it, look, let's keep it real. A lot of it wasn't pretty basketball. Uh, when the Knicks and the Rockets met in the finals that year, it was it was a war. They actually had several fights. Uh, but there used to be a lot of fights in the score. NBA. You remember yeah, that? A it lot. was hard to score. But I, even that said, Rob, you got to have I, number 10. Skip even had him number nine. <laughs> Did he? So Kenny Skip had him worse than Skip. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised by that. I was very shocked by that. Yeah. Kenny has been sh- – you know, I, well, he's, he I, also, I said he's he just, gone gap band on us, dropping bombs. Remember, uh, he said Denver or Dallas is going to win, win the championship. Right. And now he, he let me tell you work. something. If he pulls that one out, I will give him mad respect. Oh, yeah. seriously. If yeah. he gets that right, one of those two teams, I'm not buying it. But that that's out there. That's not just taking the uh, standard uh, that's out favorites. There. All right. Yeah, that that's is out there. out there. What do you think it would mean for Luca if they did win it? Oh, that would put him on a fast track. And he would be looked at as somebody, Chris, who's going to pass some of those big stars. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, as you go forward. He, he to win this. Have, yeah. I think the, the, the ceiling that people have for him would, would rise. Oh, I, Then I, people would start thinking, okay, this guy could probably be one of the top ten players ever. Yep. I'm, I'm serious. If you to win that quickly. Right, right. All right, Rob. Uh <laughs> Rajon Rondo was not happy with the digs down in Disney. All right. He uh he compared it to a Motel 6. Is that correct? That's the yes. word out? That's the word. I'm trying to find his direct quote. Wow. Oh, he tw- he tweeted something. Okay, he tweeted or Instagram mo- he did a graphic basically showing his room and said Motel 6, huh? At NBA. <laughs> Look, the room isn't that bad. Have you seen the, the picture, Rob? I have not seen the picture. No, nah, but- it don't look that bad. But I, I got an interesting story about that. I remember, and I, look, I get it. I mean, they, they They're stay used five to a certain star. Yeah. Right. There, there's a certain uh, hotels that they can't stay at. That's not in the, the union CBA, Chris. It has right. to be a certain standard. And they're not NBA down, standard. Yeah. Right. right. And then Disney, which has nice rooms, but they're not. 
They stay in five star hotels. When I the best did hotels in the city. Reporting, yeah, we stayed at the same places as the teams, and uh, they were boutique. A lot of times, boutique hotels, five star, really, really ex- spectacular hotels. And uh, I remember when I first started covering pro sports, Rob. This was 1995, and I was the backup for the Cleveland Indians wow. when they were in the playoffs. And, you know, they had, they had that team. trip to the world. Oh, good, they had right. so many great players. And so, I don't know if you remember uh, Bart Hubbock. Do you remember yeah, him? Yeah, sure. Yeah. He covered the Cavs right before me, and they yep. moved him to the uh, Browns, I believe, when they moved me onto the Cavs. But anyway, he – so, we – Bart was with me. It was me and Bart were kind of, you know, writing sidebars and stuff. And uh, Sheldon Ocker, who you probably know, I know was the main course. beat writer. Right, right. And a so, great guy. And yes, a great guy. the great guy. Sheldon and Terry Pluto, who was our star columnist, now writes for Cleveland.com, they were staying at, like, a, a really nice hotel. <laughs> and we were in Seattle because they, they – uh, they, I guess the Indians were playing the uh, the Mariners, if I remember correctly. And um, so Bart and I were at, like, a Holiday Inn, right? And so for me, I had been covering, like, high school sports – and then a little at University of Akron, some, right? Some NH, not NHL, but minor league hockey, uh, some minor league, you know, soccer. And so at we're at the Holiday Inn, and I'm thinking, you know, this is cool. This is fine. And Bart, I was with Bart in the hotel, and he's just complaining like this. They got us in this, you know, this trash and, blah, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm kind of looking at like he sensed that I was looking at him like, dude, chill. This ain't that bad. And he just said to me, I didn't even say anything. He just said to me, he said, look, when you start covering the NBA next year and you start staying in these, you know, Marriott's, you know how it right. was, Rob. You start staying in these different hotels, uh, you'll, you'll know what I mean. Your standards will rise. And he's right. You know, eventually. Once you, you get, get used, used to a yes. certain thing, to a certain yes. hotel. There's no doubt about it. It changes uh, what your expectations are. When you're a college kid, Chris, and you don't have any money, yeah, yeah. and you just go to any hotel and put your head down and fall out, you don't even think about it. NBA guys, definitely different. No question. I remember before I before that, maybe months before that, I covered an Eastern Michigan, University of Akron versus Eastern Michigan college game. Earl Boykins. You remember Earl Boykins? Sure. In the NBA. He I was used to playing for games. Eastern Michigan. Yep. yep. And so I get in town. I got some several hours to kill. So it's the afternoon. I'm watching like it's Saturday afternoon. I'm watching like a football playoff game, the Browns or something. And I get in the tub. I'm at a red roof in. <laughs> oh, my. And I get in the tub and I'm watching the game from the tub and thinking, this is the life. You thought, you know it, you thought it was good. You right. You, I'm thinking like, I'm living, lo- I've made it. I've and, made it. You know? And then you realize that there was a mouse in the tub with you. <laughs> <laughs> and that changed right. everything. I, I would, my wife wouldn't let me get in the tub at a rare roof. Right. Are no, you no kidding? No disrespect right. to rare roof. In, no, but, I you know, know what you're saying. Right. Yeah, this certain yeah. hotel, you get in the tub? You don't know who's been in that tub. <laughs> right. So, no, nah, I get it, Ryan, though. I mean, I, I think people, look, you don't have to put that out. Uh, but I, I, it's just, you know, you get you get used to certain things. And Rondo obviously is used to a certain level. And so uh, he's not pleased. It's interesting. I wonder how these dudes are feeling. You know what I mean? They're going to be there for a long time, I know they're not feeling that great just to start. You know what I mean? It's a big Because they have to be kind of quarantined a for a few days by themselves. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a trip. All right. 